Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is James Jones, and I am the founder of the organization, the nonprofit, the Reinvention Center, which is actually founded, I mean, established in Oxon Hill, Maryland. Tonight, we are hosting, along with other organizations, we are hosting Growth Hour, and the topic for tonight will be Ingredients to Change. Um, there will be several different opinions on what the, those ingredients are, and um, I'm sure, like myself, everyone is looking forward to hear what everybody feels the, are the, the, the key ingredient, ingredients to uh, actually make a successful change in life. Um, however, before we get to that, I want to acknowledge uh, Ms. Sandy Free, Ms. Sandy Freeze from Factual, Factual Innocence, uh, the organization Factual Innocence. Um, Ms. Lisa Riley from Breaking Silence. Uh, Ms. Miranda Kittler from Life After Felony. Mr. Maurice Clifton from Sailing with Sippy. Ms. Jessica Urbana, and she's the boss of the bosses. Um, I just would like to, uh. <laughs> she is the founder and the president of that, of that establishment, you know, um, but I would just like to acknowledge everyone and tell everybody thank you. I have a special guest on here. Um, you know, it's, it's a, 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 a very dear family member of mine who um, has, you know, has, you know, reached out to me today. And, you know, and I was able to enlighten him on what it, what exactly it is that uh, where I'm at in life, where God has me at in life at this point. So um, I asked him to come on to the show so he can give his ingredients as I share his ingredients and other thoughts as uh, into any subject that he would like to uh, uh, touch on. Very, um, very, very intelligent gentleman, very, very enlightening conversation we had today. I look forward to him actually speaking to you all um, later in the show. I will introduce him, please forgive me. I will introduce him and allow him to uh, speak um, before, you know, after, please forgive me. I'm doing three things at one time and let me stop. Um, I want to go with Mr. Quentin Sanders. I want to give you an update on him. You know, we are pushing forward with Mr. Sanders. Um, you know, Mr. Sanders, for the ones that don't know, it's a gentleman that has 51 years to life for a crime that he committed at the age of 17. He's presently served 21 years in the Tennessee Department of Corrections. Since being there, he has took, um, I can't, I can't, I don't even know where to begin when I try to describe to you the um, transition he has made in his life since being incarcerated. Um, just know that he has, you know, because he was 17 when, when he got incarcerated, crime was committed. Um, he didn't complete high school, so he did get his GD. He completed a college course. Um, um, he's taken a trade, a vocational trade, brick mason, amongst all type of spiritual classes and amongst other classes. He teach classes. Um, he makes up classes to help any any gentleman that he can. He's involved with any mentoring and stuff inside the prison, which um, there's no doubt that he's turned himself into a very valuable individual. You know, our, our quest is to get him out here where he can be more valuable to the public than, than to, uh, we understand everybody in there need help, but we need more, you know, we need help out here as well. You know, it's a, it's a shortage of uh, individuals that have the altitude, and the knowledge that he has possessed and the motivation and the self-determination to do the things that he has done. Um, do know if he, you know, that just because he comes home, that doesn't mean that he can't go back into the prisons and continue to help the individuals in the prison. Um, I wanted to give update on him. You know, we are diligently working toward that. November, we are uh, uh, planning a rally for him and in Mississippi, South Haven, Mississippi, somewhere around that area there. We will get back with you on the actual dates. Um, we will be also um, conducting uh, a, a, a hoodie drive or t-shirt drive among other other things to uh, to obtain or to to get funds, to build funds for his, his plight. Um, other than that, I want to say that I thank everybody for coming. Please be respectful of everybody's responses and everybody's answer. It's, you know, everybody's view. You know, I know you do, but I still would like to say that for the newcomers. Um, with that being said, I'm going to introduce my co-host, uh, Mr. Maurice Clifton. Can you uh, unmute yourself, sir? And allow him to- No. 
What's thanks, up, y'all? How thanks, doing? thanks, 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 for, thanks for being, you know, uh, for for uh, for coming today. Definitely appreciate you coming. Um, also, before I get you to speak, also there's a young lady that reached out to me last night from uh, London, England. I believe in London. In London, um, I'm not gonna say England, London, and um, she has a project that she would like for us to uh, look into. And I told her that you know I would get with the panel and whatnot and. You know, um, at some point she I know she's watching the Zoom. I don't know if she's actually uh, on the actual uh, participant in this. But if she is, then I ask that she show her face so she can actually explain what the scenario is to the panel. Then we can go from there. But uh, her husband is in uh, Florida Department of Corrections and he has to uh, has forever and a day in there for a crime that he didn't commit. Um, so I just want to put that out there. Now, with that being said, Mr. Clifton, uh, good evening. Nice to see you. Please introduce yourself. I have uh, some other people here that are unfamiliar with you, so I actually you do. They start off with by doing that. Hi, I'm uh, Maurice Clifton, and uh, I'm the founder of uh, SAIL, which stands for Sippy's Advocacy Initiative and Leadership. And it was started out of the necessity. Well, some of the adverse situations I faced coming home, I felt the need to start an, an agency or an organization that helps people transition from incarceration to back into society. I think it's a lot of things that we miss when, or, or even the BOP or the Department of Correction miss when they turn people loose. They don't give them the necessary tools to get back in the right lane and they end up in a faster lane than they, they have been accustomed to for the past decade or so, a couple of decades or so. I spent 23 years in federal prison for, as a first time nonviolent offender for a drug sale. And so what I do is I work with incarcerated, the children of incarcerated parents and I work with families to try to bring their loved ones home. You know, I did times with James and uh, you know, we talked about helping people one day. We just didn't know the magnitude that we were going to uh, help people. So, you know, I fight daily on a constant basis for several, for several people who are still incarcerated. You know, I, God bless me to land a job back into inside the Department of Correction with the state of Mississippi, you know, here in Mississippi at Parchment. So, you know, I'm employed there as a re-entry, as a re-entry coordinator and a chaplain there. So I'll be able to give back and help people, you know, from the from the inside out and from the outside in and vice versa. So yeah, it's an honor to be here. You know, so James has my information. I'll leave my contact information inside the uh, the chat room. You know, if anybody wants to contact me and help with anything. So thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Clifton. Um, I want to say something before we actually, you know, go into the actual topic. I understand everybody has some things they would like to say when I give you the opportunity to speak, speak on any, speak on the topic, of course. But also, if you have anything else you would like to speak on, um, start off with that and then go into the topic. Um, but I want to touch on what Mr. Clifton was saying as far as there being a need. Um, he 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 created an organization out of necessity. Um, I want you know I definitely agree that there are a need for what we're doing in organizations that have started. Don't misunderstand me. There were organizations that were before us, and there's going to be organizations that's after us. However, what I what I want everyone to know is um, a lot of I think some of the organizations, while are good and their intentions are good, have gotten kind of off track. And then um, you know from a, from a prisoner standpoint, a personal uh, standpoint of being a uh, once someone who was incarcerated, I, I I learned firsthand that a lot of these big organizations don't help the prisoner or don't help the individuals coming home from prison. You know, um, you know, it has to be some type of gain for these organizations in order for them to get involved. You know, so again, that is where the necessity or the need comes in for the organization that 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 we are. You know, I faced a lot of challenges coming home and I spoke to a lot of organizations while in and coming out and um, there was very little help, you know, um, very little help. I repeat that, very little help. You know, everybody has an opinion and everybody has um, uh, um, their view of how they view these organizations, but just know that um, when you, you know, reach out to them, I encourage you to reach out to them. Only, the only thing they can do is tell you no, you know, which 90% of them is, but do reach out to them. You know, with that being said, what I'd like to do is uh, go to Mr. Clifton and then um, uh, my, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work my way across the border, let everybody stop, spot after everybody else gets through with their uh, opinion of what 
they feel like the, the, the ingredients are to change, then I would, you know, uh, give you my personal ingredients. Um, go ahead, Mr. Clifton. I would like to start off with you. Oh, really? Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. Well, the first thing that we have to put in the pot, we have to put the the realization that there is a need for us to change. I'm going to speak on myself and, you know, my situation. You know, I, the, the biggest thing for me is to uh, be truthful and be honest, you know, with myself that uh, that in order to become better, I have to change. Then once I recognize that there is, you know, a need for change, then I have to come up with a formulation of or direction of where I want to go. Not an end goal because too too many times when people make the decision to change, they set these unrealistic markers for them to try to get to without thinking that nothing is going to occur along the way. So I, I had to realize that I have to change one minute at a time, one second at a time, one day at a time. You know, and to once I set goals, I set from hourly goals to daily goals to where I had to do things within a 24 hour time span on a consistent basis. Then once I felt like I had graduated, then I moved it out to a week. And once I could do things on a weekly basis, and that's mean, and, and for me, that was changing myself internally, spiritually. I had to build my, my spiritual foundation to become a more solid platform because that, that gave me the moralistic compass you know, that guides me and keep me on the right path. You know, so once I had that moral compass to, to guide me, to let me know when I strayed uh, out of the lane of righteousness and to always guide me back into the lane of righteousness, then then I know that I was on the direction of a uh, path. And then, you know, along the way, I had, I had to do self-assessment to see if I had really changed. Because a lot of time when people say things about you, you know, people are not able to be tactful. So they always tell you the truth. And so our ears are not meant to really, and our mind is not willing to process the truth because we don't believe that that person could be us. So sometimes you have to kind of flip the mirror and look at it, you know, look at uh, yourself through their prism. And then you can better understand, you know, who you really are. Am, am I being, am I being two people, how I want people to be to me. And so that's how I always kind of, you know, gauge, uh, uh, myself and change and stuff. So the biggest thing for me, my first ingredient to change was coming to the knowledge that there was a need for change within me. So before I could even stir the pot and address and add anything else, any more ingredients for change, I had to come to the realization that there was a need for, it's like baking the cake or even cooking pop. The one thing baking for Popeye, nobody talks about it. Before they could even get to the season, they had to realize that there's a need for chicken not necessarily the side. So no matter how good the season is, they don't have the chicken, it's not worth anything. So for me, the, the, the chicken for me was knowing that, you know, that I needed to change in order to become a better person. So that's my spiel. Um, Any questions? Yeah, I'm about to give you one. So just be, oh. please be careful. Formalizing it in my mind, brother. Um, you know, I noticed one thing. First, I, I would like to uh, point out that the first thing you said was the spiritual aspect. And I'm glad you brought that up because I have a brother that's on the show that's a guest that's a sh on the show that I'm going to have to speak next. So, um, uh, and, he, and he's going to bring more on the spiritual aspect. But the second thing, a notable thing that you brought up was, you know, you have to, you have to come to a realization that there is a change that's needed. You know, um, a lot of people, you know, get used to what I would call a chaotic way of life, you know, and they feel that, Hey, it's been working all these years, 30 years, 40 years. So there's no need for change. You know, um, you know, I, I always challenge myself and I encourage people to always challenge their self. Um, so, you know, with that being said, Mr. Clifton, I definitely appreciate your comment. No, I don't have no question for you today. Okay. I'm ready now. I'm ready now. <laughs> no, I don't have no question for you today, brother. Anybody else? <laughs> Anybody else have a question they would like to break to what it says? Okay. Well, I'll unmute yourself, Miss Miranda. Go ahead, ma'am. When you realize that there is a need for change, Mr. Maurice, like what, what do you feel what, what has been the biggest change that you've actually had to make? I freak out over change. I don't like change. 
although I have to constantly change in my life, whether it's um, changing how I handle certain situations, changing what kind of mom I'm going to be today, changing um, how, however, there's just so many levels that I'm not the same person that I was three years ago. I'm not the same person that I was a year ago, not the same person that I was a week ago. I'm constantly growing. And if you can adapt to that, what like what has been your biggest change that your self personal change? What's been my biggest change is uh learning patience. You no know, patience. So without 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 patience, you can't. You can't change. Everybody is so used to getting everything right now. You know what I mean? And so if you don't have the patience to uh, pursue change and in your pursuit of change to wait, you know, I have a, I have a thing that I say that I said for, for many years of incarceration, everything in God's timing. No matter what I did, wasn't anything going to happen until God was ready for it to happen. You know what I mean? So, but what I had to do was, what I had to do was keep doing the right things. And, you know, for me, for me, you know, God would send me signs saying that even when I used to get weary, I used to get weary and sometime and thinking, man, why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? And why am I doing, you know, every day you beat yourself up, man, because you see dudes in prison and James can tell you, you see dudes in prison that always got the blessing. Even when the even when the, when the conversation came in 2014 and 15, it was dudes that had been to the shoe, getting nice shot, getting incident reports and everything. And I know that I had done everything right. You know, was uh was shot free for many years, took every class that I could take. You know what I mean? Had had never been to the shoe. You know, prior to 2014 and everything, but they were getting everything. So I had to learn, I had to learn patience to continually persevere in spite of and learn that everything is in God's time and not my time. And no matter how many motions I file until it was God's timing, then I could never, I could never obtain my freedom. And that's even, that's even internally, not just my physical freedom, my, you know, but my pursuit of change gave me internal freedom. So once I gained internal freedom, it put me on a quest knowing that one day at the right time, in God's time, I would obtain my physical freedom. So the biggest thing to me was patience. You know, I would like to say that um, change, everybody needs to understand that change doesn't happen overnight. I see you, see your hand up, Lisa, and I'll get, get you to you in a second. Change doesn't happen overnight. Um, change is a, is a process. And it's, and, and it's something that you have to work on. You have to, like he said, consistently work toward that goal of change. However, I don't think that um, I think that a lot of people, I'm going to say it this way, I think that a lot of people understand they have to change and they will use the change that doesn't happen overnight in a different context. Um, because do you have to evaluate yourself and be honest with yourself and say, am I really trying to change or am I just, you know, just existing? Um, once you come to that conclusion, then um, you, you, you will move forward from there. But because you know you have to change and you're, you came to a conclusion that you have to change, then it's important that you seek out. Well, you know, and I don't want to go on the spiritual aspect because, again, I got a, a visitor that's going to speak on that. But, uh, you know, you need to seek out um, the assistance or a mentor, coach or someone that you can, you know, lean on or someone that's like minded going in the direction that you're going in and, um, and then go in that direction. You know, just sitting idle. Can, you, you can't tell me that you're that, hey, I'm working on a change and I, you can't show me nothing by your actions. You know, um, you know, so with that being said, I want you, everybody to understand that change again, first is a process and it's an action. You know, it's not something that you just say, it's something that you do, you know, so I should be able to eat, look at your actions and determine if you're sincere about this change or not, not listen at your words and say, okay, well, you told me a thousand times that you're trying to change. So this is what this is. But it's important that people understand that if you are working with somebody that's trying to change or in the process of changing, that, you know, this is new ground that they're going into. This is not something that they've been in before. So this is new ground. So they have to find their way in this change. So, you know, if we say, hey, it may be easy to you 
because you're looking at it from your perspective. Hey, why don't you just do this or why don't you just do that? And it's that easy. But you understand you are uh, you are in a part of a journey in your life that they haven't reached yet. So you, your 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 um job is to help them get to where you at, and then together y'all can find somebody else that can take y'all farther. You know, so please understand that you know sometimes people, regardless of how smart or how intelligent they may be, have to find a, a way to uh perfect this change or as, actually institute this change. So you know, uh, so I wanted to share that with everybody. I don't know where Miranda went, but I wanted to share that with with uh, with everybody. Um, Thanks, Mr. Clifton, for that. I hope that you answered Ms. Uh, Ms. Miranda's question, but um, she's not here to say yes or no. So what we're going to do, we're going to move on. We're going to move on to a, people, uh, to a gentleman that y'all see on the screen as True God. Um, he's a, a family member of mine, and um, I don't want to call his childhood name, so what I'm going to do, you have to mute yourself. Unmute yourself, sir. I don't want to call his childhood name, but so I'm going to allow him to introduce himself. And I'll uh, give his opinion of, of what he feel ingredients to changes, amongst other things. Good evening, sir. Hey, everyone. Uh, whew, I had to take a breath and just <laughs> breathe for a moment. Uh, man. Okay. Well, first off, I want to say hello to everyone. And I say that, and I come in the spirit. I come in the spirit, even though I'm flesh. I come in the spirit through my heavenly father, Yahweh. I come through his son, Jesus Christ's name. I like to do everything first in prayer. So when I come to speak about change, God for me is my change. So in that, I'm listening to all the, what Mr. Clifton had to say concerning uh, the change and what Mr. Jones had to say concerning change and for everybody change is different because some people are believers, some people are non-believers, but I feel that anyone who has God will be able to change if they are sincere about God first and putting God first because so many things are flesh. So many things that we're doing in society, we live in the moment, everybody trying to do this and do that. Everybody have so many things that they have going on in life. Um, so for me, change is, it's, a, it's so many, it's a number of things. But like I said, first, every day starts with God, every day ends with God for me. And I always do everything in Jesus name. For someone who always believed but didn't follow, but then that's what it took in my life for me to have the right type of change to let God be the leadership of my life. And with me doing, having God as the lead of my life, it has changed many things with many changes to come. So it's a process. Um, uh, it, it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing that you brothers come, come out, you know, from situations where you're out there trying and striving to enlighten others to be better. Some people are going to take to the change and some people are not gonna to wanna to change or some people just want to say, hey, I'm, 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 I'm better better now, like a person on drugs or somebody with a, with a bad habit or an addiction just to get what they want. And sometimes people do that so that they can get out of their situation. Sometimes God keep us in situations that we created for ourselves because he knows that we're not ready sometimes. So sometimes the change don't come as fast for others. Um, so so in creating change, I heard the, the lady say earlier, you know, um, in three years about change and stuff, every every day is is a, is a struggle to do something better and to be better and just, you know, try to live our life to what's next for us. And I think a lot of time and to get to what's next for us, we have to have God. God say, lean out towards your own understanding. You know, because that's to, to him, that's not wise. So if we lean towards him, then he will guide our spirits to a, to us a, to a, to us I to a view where we can see better consciously unto the path that he has set for us and directed for us to follow. Because like I said earlier, everybody's change is not the same, and it's so many different facets of change because you could talk about change for family you could talk about change for prison you could talk about change for work you could talk about change for so many different subjects but you know and talking about incarceration 
that's a whole nother, a whole nother place. And then like Jones was saying, Mr. Jones was saying earlier, um, you know, it's so many different hoops that you have to jump through with the system. It's so many hoops that you have to jump through with the weight. It's so many hoops that you have to jump through with so many different things. And what happens for one may not happen for another. And that's just, that's just the way this, the world is. And sometimes it's unfortunate, but it's the way the world is. Um, I actually don't know exactly for myself the ingredients of change other than that I have God. God may not be it for everybody. I've met people who, who, who don't believe in God or who don't have God. And I let the spirit speak at that time for those people who are having uh, problems with life or needing you know advice you know and sometimes people need people like all of you that's here present tonight you know just taking out the time to show up that says a lot you know sometimes um that's an action by itself you know just coming to be on this zoom thing because i was sitting there saying my cousin invited me to zoom i'm telling my wife hey i want you here on zoom too and she's like hey i ain't got nothing to do with that I to be <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> so you know, but I'm but I'm here. I'm here as a support, not just for my cousin, Mr. Jones, but I'm here as a support to all of you, for anybody who need you know support in any area of life, because that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to be each one helping each other and lifting each other. And you know, when we're down and we're not feeling where we need to be at, sometimes we need someone to move our spirits. And sometimes you'll be amazed at just how someone can uplift you you know, where other people want to vent or they're going through problems and they need someone to come lift their spirits, just like that old simple hug that some people need, you know, just to bring them back, you know, to a better place. So um, I, I don't know very much what to say tonight. I had a, a, a little bit more in-depth conversation with my cousin earlier about his situations and things that he was going through and facing and telling him about my life and my changes. And, you know, life is not easy. You know, there's a lot of mountains that we got to climb you know, uh, in life period, you know, just living everyday life, you know, and for people on the inside, my heart goes out to them for their struggles, you know, and my heart goes out to those who are very sincere about getting out and want to re-enter society and change their life and do the right things. But you do also have to keep in mind that there are people on the inside who want to get out just to go back to doing some of the things that they were doing. And, you know, uh, the devil is very deceptive, you know, he can put on a lot of different uh, faces, you know, to uh, to have us believe one thing, but that doesn't say that we shouldn't still support those in need because I'm in the fight for anybody that's in need that's wanting to do right, you know, and um, do the right thing. And like all the organizations that's out there that, you know, uh, wanna, you know, achieve something monetary, you know, for helping someone or, or get some kind of, you know, uh, media attention, you know, to reach out and help someone. I think, you know, those are bad things, but we know that they exist. So um, it's, it's good that you are all sincere and that you're all, you know, fighting for change for those who are sincere in change. Because as I said, there are people out here who are not sincere, who are still committing acts of crime and murder and violence and things like that. So then you have other people who come in concerned and then you'll feel like they're rallying against what you're trying to do and what you're trying to do to make things better for the people who are sincere that, hey, what about the people who we know or we feel, you know, is gonna re-enter society, you know, and, you know, uh, cause harm to others, you know? So changes, like I said, it's just day to day. It's like Brother Clifton said, you know, seconds, minutes, hours, days, you know, you just take it one day at a time. But you take it if you if you if you if you believe in God and you believe in Jesus, definitely take it with them first. Um, you will be surprised the change that will happen in your life when you have true faith, you are a true believer, and you let God guide everything that you do. And I always say Yahweh because God say He has a name. So I say Yahweh rather than God because He said there are many gods. So I have to say Yahweh, and I do it through Jesus' name because Jesus came here with his instructions. He could have done so many other things, but he was faced with a lot of work and God's work. And we have to do the same thing. Y'all are faced with, you know, doing work of God's work to help people who are, um, who need help and assistance, you know, that really want to do the right thing and really want to re-enter society and make themselves better people and productive members of society. 
and, and, and hopefully, you know, get on the team of being good advisors and counselors, you know, for others who want that same help. And it's like passing, you know, the baton in a race, you know, on to the next person so that they can get to the finish line. And we'll forever be going passing that baton so that someone can keep in the race. So y'all continue to do what you're doing and, you know, staying in the race for those who, who need your help and your support, you know, but also remember, you know, to always remember that without God, there's no us. And without Jesus, in Jesus' name, there's no us. So, you know, I would like to just say all praise is due to God. You know, no, 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 none of us is is here without him. He's the all within the all, you know. So with saying that, I just want to say y'all keep scribing, doing what you're doing, and keep uh focus and 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 don't let the devil put out the things that he tried to put out on Jesus. You know, he tried to tempt Jesus. So a lot of us, you know, are tempted by different things in society, and when we're mindful when we're mindful to not backslide in whatever areas of life that we have leaped across where we, you know, not there anymore to not backslide, that we continue to keep going forward and just stay focused on the mission of doing the right things. I don't want to hold up too much of your time. I just want to say that, um, you know, I encourage you all to just continue doing what you're doing and, and keep growing and supporting and blessing others because it's a beautiful thing and it's a beautiful feeling to bless others and to help others and to show like Mr. Jones said, action over words. Thank you, uh, sir, uh, for, your, for your comment. And before I get into um, responding to what you had to say, and I don't think I caught your name. Do you mind um, sharing your name again for my for me <laughs> and for the All right. rest of so the my, podcast? So, so, my, so my adopted name, my adopted name was, um, Actually, Robert Dixon was my adopted name. Okay. But I changed my name back to my biological father's name, which was Renavi Gotti. So that's why my name on the screen says True God, because my middle name is True. And I'm a true God of the number one creator of all of the earth, and that is God himself, Yahweh. Okay, thank you. I wanted to also let everybody know that this gentleman here has extended um, his his services um as well to all of us if we have ra uh, rallies or whatever he he has no problem coming and speaking or participating and stuff like that um so i wanted everybody to meet him as you see he's a beautiful individual has a beautiful spirit um now what i'm going to do is touch slightly on what you're saying you know you were saying that for you that the uh, uh the uh, god is your change i definitely feel that God is instrumental in everybody's change, not just your change. He should be instrumental in everybody's change, you know, because when you look at the, and it's just something, just I, I merely give my opinion because I understand there may be, may be people with different um, religions and may not view it the way I view it. So please don't think that I'm just saying this is concrete. This is what you have to do, you know, uh, serve your God the, the way that you see or feel is fit to serve your God. You know, but I want to say that um, to me, the word Bible means basis instructions before leaving earth. So if I run it or encounter a problem, I feel like I can go to that Bible and find an answer to that problem. You know, you know, some people may say, well, hey, again, that, you know, God is, may not be instrumental in their change. Let me say this. And I ask everybody this. You don't have to answer it out loud, but I guarantee you uh, when everybody gets into a situation that's uncomfortable for them. The, the first person they call to is God, you know, um, so that being said, I feel, you know, again, that God is instrumental in the change, you know, and not only, you know, not only the instrumental, he's going to lead you, he's going to guide you, and um, he's going to put people in your life that's going to, that, that may pull you along, may give you, answer a question for you. Today, I was pondering on something, and uh, uh, Mr. Dixon called me out of the blue. I haven't spoken to him in months, it might have been a year. You know, and he just called me, say, hey, I just, he texted me, say, I just called to check on you. And then we went into a, a, a conversation that helped me grow a little bit more, you know. And um, so I, that's why I asked that he uh, come on as a guest and speak on what he sp spoke on. So he, you can get some of the, the, uh, the great information and the greatness or the great vibe that he is giving off. Um, the next thing I want to get, want anybody to know, which everybody that's on here should know for the ones that don't know, um, if you need any help, my information is on the chat room. Contact me at any time. Anything I can help you with, whether it's legal, um, advocating for a loved one, whatever the case may be, um, reach out. You know, um, I I am a person that I don't believe in taking on too much at one time because if we have a loved one that, or anyone that we know, friend or whatever in the system, one of the things we complain about is the lawyers not adequately spending enough time on our loved one's cases, you know, and that's because they have so many cases 
that they are spreading themselves thin. That being the case, I like to work on not just one individual because I got four or five projects that I have going on, but I like to have a primary primary person that I'm focusing on and then three or four other people that we're prepping to take his place after that person's objective is, is um is actually completed. So um, I'm not saying don't reach out to me. I encourage you to reach out to me because we can start the footwork now. Uh, I can give you some tasks. Just know I'm here to help you. I'm offering help. So please understand that I am offering help. Let me say that again. That don't mean I do it for you. If I do it for you, I'm not helping you. You know, I'm going to help you. So please, you know, um, let me emphasize that. Um, we have another guest on here that I'm going to move on. Thanks again, Mr. Dixon, for your comments. And feel free to chime in. Um, for anybody else comments, if you'd like to comment on anything anybody else says. Um, with that being said, we I have another. To say, can I say ahead. one thing? Sure, I just wanted the correction in the name. Remember I told you, I, I dropped off my my step, my dad who adopted me name. Okay. So my last name okay. is Gotti. 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 It's no, lo no longer Dixon. Gotti. Okay, G -H -O -D -D -I. G-H-O-D-D-I. Yep. Okay. Okay, All Mr. Right, Gotti. You know, um, right. Mr. Gotti. Um, so everybody, please take note of that. You know, uh, you know, uh, but uh, I want to move on to Miss Connie. Um, she is is a uh, private investigator out of Colorado. She's assisting us with Mr. Sanders' case, amongst other cases, and she's another individual that offers her assistance. Um, sometimes it will be a pro bono, and sometimes it may not. You know, um, if you need help, you have to contact her, which I'm going to have her give you her information and. You know, if, if we post it on the chat, I'll have her post it on the chat or any other way. If you if you don't see it that way, you can contact myself, Lisa or Maurice, and we'll get it for you. Um, my point is, she she's going to she's going to go ahead on and she want to share some information that's slightly off topic, but it's some good news for individuals that's incarcerated. Good evening, Miss Connie. Hi, how are you guys? I'm great. Sorry, I was a little late and um. I went, I um, got some information on the U.S. Supreme Court that made a ruling um, on the the stimulus checks that were that incarcerated individuals were requesting, and the IRS pretty much put a stop to that, saying if you received it, you have to pay it back, and they weren't eligible. Well, a team out of California um, won a, um, and had a US Supreme Court decision stating that um, incarcerated individuals absolutely qualify um, for that stimulus package. So I was waiting for confirm confirmation from them in before I put any information out there, but anyone that has a loved one that's incarcerated, have them fill out the information to request that stimulus check um, before August 15th. That's the deadline. Um, I was October. October, sorry. October 15th. Um, I was in... Um, I got this information directly from the attorneys that prosecuted the case and won, and they said, you know, spread the word, have everybody in every state, in every institution request it, their families can do it online for them, if not, there's forms that they can fill out, um, they're very excited to be able to help, you know, so many people with this money um and i just wanted to share that with everybody so that they did it for their own loved ones and also spread the word across you know the united states i have i have clients in kansas alabama texas colorado um they're spreading the word we're sending forms to them if they don't have loved ones that can fill out the application online um but yeah it's kind of a speedy process and i'm i'm sure most states are going to delay it long enough um <laughs> and not get the information information out so 
the deadline passes, but I just wanted to come on tonight and um, get that word out for everybody. Okay, before I ask you a question, I want to first acknowledge a few people. We have some new people that's on, um, and they are Sarah Jane. And I please forgive me if I mis uh, mispronounce your name, Mr. Clifton. You can help me if you want to. It's Janisa Jackson. Um, we want to say thank you for attending, and we hope that you do um, come more often. Um, go ahead, Mr. Clifton. Oh, that's uh, that's Ruth Rose. She's an agent. She's an agent of change. So I'm okay. Ms. Jackson, yes, but she's uh, she does a lot in the advocacy realm, and so does uh. Miss Sarah Jane. Miss Sarah Jane, would you uh tell people who you are and what you do? Briefly, if you want to. Sure, sure. So um I am Sarah Jane. Um I now currently live in Mississippi. I was in New York. Um I was an advocate in New York up until February of this year when I um decided that I needed to be down here in Mississippi full-time doing the advocacy work I was trying to do in New York. Um, I have the Parchman Project, and um, it, it's a grassroots that started, you know, summer of last year when, um, you know, we, we were just really tired of the conditions that, um, you know, our loved ones were, were living in. Um, and, you know, since the riots, things have, you know, we're, we're, we really concentrating on, um, you know, any kind of assistance we could, we could be for rehabilitation inside. Um, I, I do my, my goal and vision is really to empower inmates to really take a hold of their own rehabilitation, um, you know, and, and definitely, the reentry process, um, you know, and, and I, I'm a mental health and addiction therapist. So, um, you know, I help families too. I, and that's, you know, I really do help families of loved ones, um, you know, who might, you know, if their loved ones are incarcerated due to addiction, you know, where, where can we get the help that, that they need? You know, if, if, there, there is mental health concerns. Where can, you know, where is that help available? Um, so I do, I do a lot of, uh, you know, I do a lot of research for, for resources as well and, and helping the families so that the families are very well prepared for their loved one to come home. But that, that's really what, what we're all about is with the Parchment Project is, um, is, is, you know, rehabilitation, reentry and, and working with the families to make sure they're where they, they need to be. But um, thank you very much for, for inviting me here. And, and it's been a great conversation. I just wanted to add one more thing. You know, the, the one word that keep, keeps coming, that keeps popping into my mind is, um, you know, listening to uh, Mr. Maurice mention patience and, and everything else is that instant gratification. Um, you know, and, and that, that seems to be a real issue you know, and, and what causes, you know, what causes people to be impulsive and, and make rational, irrational decisions that, that, you know, um, land them where they are. And, you know, even when they're inside, they want that instant gratification inside as well. And, um, you know, and, and, and it's what inhibits the, the change that needs to be made. But again, thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Um, if you don't mind, can you leave your contact information inside the chat room so that some of us can, you know, so everybody on the panel can actually uh, have it if they need to reach out to you for anything. Um, also, I want to thank you again and Miss Janissa Jackson. Janissa Jackson as well for uh, coming. We definitely appreciate you coming. Um, I also want to acknowledge all of the people that are viewing it on Facebook. Um, we have some special guests. I want to hear some more special guests on Facebook. Um, there's no question Miss Anderson's on Facebook. And Mr. Gotti, I appreciate you coming because you brought along Miss Fanny Jones and Miss uh, Faith Thurman with you. You know, um, 
And I know they normally watch it, but they're actually watching it now. So I wanted to thank you for bringing along your entourage and the rest of the family with you as well. Now, what I would like to do after saying that, what I would like to do is go back to Miss Connie. Please un unmute yourself, Miss Connie, because I have a few questions I want to ask you. And I think the viewers who want to I'd like to know as well. Um, my first one of the viewers asked me what was the deadline, and I told her it was October the 15th. Am I correct in, in telling her that? Yes. Yes, the Octo it's it's October 15th and I spoke directly with the attorneys on the case and that um I think I posted in the the messages um what information she um sent me in regards to that and I think family members um can go on the irs.gov and apply for their incarcerated loved ones um, as a non-tax filer um, and, and put all the information in there. I don't know if they want to have the, the money sent to their bank account, if they want to have the money sent to their incarcerated loved one. But I know a lot of people were hesitant to do anything because the IRS um, were once they found out that money was being sent to the, to incarcerated people they were requiring them to pay it back and then they were stopping checks but this this u.s supreme court order ruling um does not um allow the irs to stop payment and um make them pay any monies back that they have requested in the meantime. So I've been just trying to put that word out to my clients and their families, um, any, anybody I know incarcerated um, to get this information in by October 15th so that they can receive that $1,200. Um, because I think it would go a long ways um, with just being able to stay in touch with their families, buying the, the things that they need to, to live on and, and survive that they don't have. And um, the, the team of attorneys that I talked to, they're very excited. They want the word to get out. They want people to get this, you know, this money that can help them and the families and, you know, and, and it, they want. It, it's legit. <laughs> so I just wanted to spread the word because I know you guys have a huge platform and a lot of people that you know and can get the world, the word out, you know, all over. I'm just a small little business that works with <laughs> a few clients here and there and tries to do what I can to advocate everywhere else. Um, but if you guys can get the word out, yeah. Well, we would do the best that we can to get the word out. Um, and we definitely appreciate the information that you gave it is. It is something that's very, very, um, valuable, you know, so, cause I don't think that a lot of people are incarcerated know that they can actually receive a stimulus check and you are correct. Um, I forget what year it was when we did get a stimulus check before. Um, the Federal Bureau of Prisons was stopping in at the mail room and sending the checks back to the RS. Um, so um, we, you know, we will, um, we, I will pass the information on and get it to people and see how this works out. And if we need any help or anybody needs any help, if, uh, if you can't, you don't have the, um, the ability to see the chat, then reach out to uh, myself or anybody, uh, Lisa or, or Maurice, and we can get the information. We can connect you with Miss Connie at that point there. Um, yeah. What I'm going to do is I know I know Lisa has all my information. So yeah, Lisa has all my information. They can reach out. I'll I'll we're sending. I'm actually sending like bulk um, packages into the prisons where I have clients already incarcerated for those that don't have contact with families or don't have families that can do this for them online. 
so they can fill out the forms and get them submitted before the deadline. Um, I'm in the process of doing that for for a lot of people. So, um, yeah, Lisa has my contact information. Um, I think you have some of mine. So yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yeah, absolutely. Um, without, if you don't mind, can you include later on? Yeah, you know, I give you my information, the actual mailing information, if you don't have it. But uh, can you send me one of those bulk packages, packages that you're mailing out? So what I can do is copy it and send it to individuals. Um, that I know that's incarcerated for them to fill out or their family members or their loved ones. So when we actually start spreading the word doing, through our uh, platforms that um, we can have the actual information that they need to fill out, if they need us to send it to them, we can send it to them and we can go from there. Um, that way we can expedite the process because the deadline is fastly approaching. So um, can, you put me on that, can you put me on that list? Thank you. Um, did you yes. want to comment? Did you want to comment on the topic of ingredients to change or do you, are you passing on that? Um, well, since I kind of came in late, I haven't gotten all of the information okay. that everybody has put out there. So, um, I'm all about change and doing whatever I can as, as far as helping anybody and everybody that, um, whether they're coming out of prison, where they were, whether they were wrongly convicted, whether they were. You know, they just need some support. Um, you know, that's that's what I do. And um, yeah, I guess that's <laughs> okay. Well, that's I definitely appreciate it. That's why I actually, I did. I do know. I do know that you came. You know, and I know. You know, and I, that's why I actually I don't want to mean to put you on the spot or anything. But I did. I wanted to give you an opportunity. Um, that's what I wanted to do. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. What we're gonna do is um. I'm going to go on to Mr. Parks uh, and ask, can you unmute yourself, Mr. Parks? You look so ready to give me an answer. How you yes, doing, sir? sir? Um, no, I, I actually came on late myself. So can I have a refresher? Can you tell, <laughs> like, <laughs> like ingredients to change. Uh, what what we, exactly? That's, that's obtuse. What does so. it mean to you? What does it mean to you? What, ingre what ingredients do you think um, are needed for a successful change? Some, you know, uh, Mr. Gotti up on, on here has stated, um, the spiritual aspect of it. Mr. Clifton chimed in with the spiritual aspect of it, as well as patience. Um, Miss Sarah Jane, she said instant gratification. Um, you know, um, we can't expect instant gratification, which I 100% agree with that. Instant gratification is what got a lot of us in prison because we wanted what we want when we wanted it. Um, um, so that, this far, those are, you know, um, those are the responses that we have gotten as far as what is, what does uh angry or what are ingredients to change for you what what are the things that you need or that you think that a person can use or may want to reach out to try to get in order to get make a, have a successful change okay all right so you're talking about a change to a better um, person uh, a better person first of all you have to have a, a changed mindset so, so we have we have to look historically. How did how did we get our mindset in a place that it's at now? And I, my 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 favorite question is why. You know why? I always ask why to everything. I've always been inquisitive since I was a child. I always wanted to know the answer to every question. So you have to ask the right questions if you want the right answers. So first of all, uh, I don't believe in in pointing fingers at a victim for victimizing. Um, like if, if we if we if we go back far enough to to the root of the origin of these issues we are having, um, then I feel like the answer will come. But we first have to we have to we have to uh, establish where this came from. Where this uh, let me see let me see. Well, I'm trying to think of how uh, how to word it. The fact that we keep going back and forth to prison. Where did it come from? Like, who's asking the question? Like, how, why, why? And a lot of it has to do with economics. So if you don't look at our economic situation in this country, you will never get the answer to why we having such a, a, a problem in the criminal justice system. It all deals with economics and, and the ability to get certain things. We have been set back. 
um, historically, economically, if you would look at most of the um, attempts in, in Black America to pull ourselves up by our bootstrap, we had done it successfully. There are countless examples of uh, uh, Wilmington, North Carolina, Tulsa, Oklahoma, uh, Durham, North Carolina, uh, that Fayetteville, that just, you could just name uh, 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 Charleston, South Carolina. So we had situations where we were doing very well as a people. And when you're doing very well, you have less crime. But what happened in all those situations was um, our neighbors didn't like the fact that we were doing so good. So we had riots and they destroyed and burned down our city. So that set us back and put us back and they continue to set us back. We would get ahead and we would get set back. So we have to look at historically why we're in the situation we're in. And there has to be some accountability. At some point, somebody gotta be like, look, you are right, we did that. We need to rectify that. If that is, if that's not the, if that's not um, gonna happen, then I feel like we need to stop begging. And we need to stop asking for change and we need to make change, especially economically. We need to start working together and investing our money. We need to continue to have platforms like this that um, highlight and, and, and shed a light on what's going on with our criminal justice system for a society who basically have written us off. Um, they look at it like, okay, well, he broke the law. Yeah, we, we broke the law, but we just wanna have our just you know, I want my, my sentence to match the sentence of somebody else who broke the law and did the same thing I did. My sentence shouldn't be uh, five or six times more than another person, you know? Um, so we definitely need to look at that. Um, I was looking at something on Facebook today and there were two men, they had identical crimes, identical criminal history and went in front, in front of the same judge. One got two years, the other got like 30 or 25. So, and it was all about race. So we need, to, we need to have some type of a committee that oversees the actual sentences of these judges. Judges don't have anybody looking at their, at their, um, their sentences, you know, for fairness. Let me, let me ask you this, Mr. Fox. Yeah. Um, I got a few things out of what you're saying. Um, okay. We'll start off with um, accountability. Um, yeah. And you're saying that we should make the judges and everybody accountable for the things that they do. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. This is that's what what you are actually saying. No, nah, I'm talking about um, our government, our government. So I was I was in the federal government. It's it's so it's so funny because you have such a difference between the federal sentences and the state sentences. The federal system and the state sentence. You can get uh, convicted of something on, uh, or you can beat something on the state. Then the feds will turn around and convict you of it. Like it's it's that needs to be that needs to be a balance in this country where we don't with like. We're in the United States of America, but we're not united. Even our governments aren't united. So how can the feds overrule the state? Like it's 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 too much uh, um, uh, ambiguity in our sentencing structures. It, it it it's crazy. I've seen a person actually go to trial and beat it on the state and get sentenced on the feds. Like like how? So what? It's 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 too much, man. It's too much to we. Have, in order to get to the bottom of this, man, we got to first pinpoint what the actual cause of it is, uh, who's behind it, what do we need to do to change it? I think we need to change a lot of these draconian citizen laws that we have in place. The fact that we're looking back to our founders who, who set this, this country and you know, set the laws 400 years ago, we can't improve. Like, I don't understand why the US constitution that was written by individuals, you know, so many years ago is still like, you know, concrete. Like we have gotten wiser. One thing we've done as a people is we've evolved mentally. So if I'm, if we're smarter now, why are we still going by precedent set by individuals uh, three, 400 years ago? It just doesn't make sense. You know, a lot of things don't make sense. Why is it that we're still using Latin in our, in our sentence, in our judge, in our courts? Because who Latin, first of all, is a dead language. It's not used anymore unless it's in the court system. So why are we using something that, that further complicates things for a lot of individuals who are limited in, you know, in education? Why are we making it hard on these individuals to defend themselves? Why is nobody saying anything about that? Like, like we have, we have like, like yourself, James, like I spent a lot of time in law library, but only on my case. 
you spent a lot of time in there working on your case and others. There were guys who, who helped other people. Me, I focused on my case. So it was difficult enough for me to learn these, these Latin terms, what they meant, you know, uh, it's just too much. I just feel like if, if, if it's supposed to be justice, if we're supposed to be operating on an even uh, a level playing ground, why not make it where we're all speaking in layman terms? That's one one thing that'll help a whole lot. You know, you got you got guys who are partly uh, um, illiterate going into court. They don't know what's being said. They don't know what's being said. They don't like. I mean, I mean, they actually do not know. They don't understand it. So we need we need to make it more understandable. There's so many like that's a big question you ask me, James. Okay, well, let, let me say this. Let me chime in right there, sir. Yeah. So I want to I recap what you're saying. Okay, Um, I want to first say, you mentioned the word accountability. Okay. I want to first say accountability starts with self first. You got to hold yourself I, uh, accountable. Absolutely. Okay, you absolutely. keep, you know, we, we're hearing as you're saying, why don't we, we this, and why are we going by this, why are we go? What have you done to change that? What We are having this platform to change that's that. A that's a good question. Rhetorical, you know, that's a rhetorical question because we're doing what we're doing, but it starts with you. So what are we, what, what are you doing to change it? We are having oh. this platform. You're on here, and, and you, I know you do speaking engagements. You go and speak out and do um, uh, In uh, motivation. Okay, so now, still, you, you, you plant a seed. You know, um, then then allow them to cultivate it, regardless of wherever you're going at and speaking. What you're saying makes sense. So start planting that seed because everybody in prison don't stay in prison. Eventually, people come home. You know, so now if you planted that seed and they cultivate it when they're inside, when they come home, they're coming home with this like we did, like Mr. Clifton. Mr. Clifton haven't been home. I believe it's what eight months, nine months. Already have an organization, already uh, having an impact on what's going on, advocate for people. But he can't. He but his seed was cultivated and his plant grew while he was in inside. So when he came home, he went. His feet was on the ground and he went to running. The next thing I want to say is our mindset. You spoke on mindsets. You know, mindset is based on your exposure, what you exposed to. You know, so now in order for, you know, this is one of the reasons why I like having this platform because it gives or expose people to different um, mindsets, different um, play people from different walks of life, different areas, because you got people on here from several different states. I don't think there's two people on here that's in the same state, you know, so <laughs> we've been exposed to a, a different uh, a different way of looking at life and things like that there. So now the mindset is one of the things that, you know, um, that, that um, is what makes the, I mean, exposure is what makes up your mindset. So you have to expose yourself to something different. This is why they say when you're changing, you need to get around people that are not of the same mindset that you once were, but need to get around people who have business mindsets and stuff like that. Something briefly, when I was in Ashley, Kentucky, I hung out, and you, we all know people who've been in the system. I, we all are against individuals that deal with children. Um, we are all against, you know, that there. But I was considered to hang around the, the widows. But the widows had all the information I needed. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, they helped me be able to form myself into the person I am in order to get to where I am today. Am I taking on the bad habits they had? No. I just went there and got the good information that I could get and gave them good information when they needed good information. So it wasn't a, just a one-way thing. The, 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 the third thing you, you mentioned was money, economics. That was the term you used, economics. Um, you're saying that all of this is about the people or, or um, you were saying that the people, this was about um, us going to jail and stuff like that there. I agree. There's a problem with the system and the system is about economics. But my question to you is, what about the people that didn't go to jail? So how does economics play a part in them? What about them? You know, I know a lot of people that didn't go to jail. At the end of the day, what we need to do, and you know, I ain't gonna say what we need to do because I don't want to sound affinity. What I think uh, uh, would be a great idea is we um, continue to do what we're doing, coming on, the, uh, on on this broadcast and coming up with ideas, and you know, everybody presenting their opinion. But at this, at the end of the day, I also feel that uh, again, like Mr. Gotti said, that everything to me, I can't, you know, and I I, I hate to talk that way, but to me. Um, I think that everything begins with spirituality. You know, um, once you make it, then the second thing is your mindset. You have to make a decision on, hey, I'm tired of this. I've had enough of this. I want to change this. What can I do to change in order to make myself a better person to help everybody, help the change that needs to go on outside? You know, um, it starts, so back to what I'm saying, everything starts with you. You know, so 
once you make you a better person, then you can pass on the information to everybody else. Um, prime example of that is Mr. Mr. Quentin Sanders. Been in prison 21 years. You got another example of it, Maurice. Look at yourself. You know, um, people who, you know, we, you know, I can laugh at it now, but you know, but it wasn't a laughing matter with the inside. Who would have thought that all three of us or the individuals that that's on this broadcast that has been to prison will be doing what they're doing today? Who would have thought that? Nobody would have thought that James would be doing what he's doing. Nobody would have thought that with eight, within one year of being home, Mr. Clifton has uh, um, a couple of organizations, um, is working in the prison doing, uh, as a chaplain doing a reentry. Who would have thought that? Now, we know he was intelligent. We know that he was a person that always helped people because he taught all type of classes, wrote resumes. I know he stayed in education over in Yazoo, Mississippi with me. Um, but who would have thought that? My point is, you know, um, we, we have to, you know, we have to challenge ourselves. And then once we challenge ourselves, then we can make a difference, you know, um, but in the making that difference, again, spirituality, your exposure, like you're saying, once you, once you, a uh, decision, spirituality, a decision to change, then your exposure, who are you going to hang around? Um, what are you going to, are you going to continue to hang around people that don't, um, that aren't doing anything in a constructive manner, or are you going to get around people that are? You know, these are the questions that we must ask ourselves. To answer your question to sum it up, um, we, you know, we are supposed to change this. We are supposed to vote. We're supposed to study who our candidates are. We're voting for and stuff like that there. So I definitely agree with you, Mr. Paul. We need to make a change, but it starts with you. You know, um, you know and if, I always say this, if anybody needs some help, not that I have all the answers, I'll give you what I do have, though. I'm willing to do that. Um, Go ahead, sir. So, 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 to add on to what you said, James, me, when I came home in 2015, I started my nonprofit organization, Versatile Development Group, geared towards, I became a re-entry advocate the day I stepped out. So I wasn't going to forget the individuals I left behind. A lot of us do that. Well, and I'm, a lot of people come home and they're free in their selfish natures. All they worry about is themselves. So I haven't stopped thinking about the people I left behind since I came home. So I'm a re-entry advocate now. I've been back in the prison speaking. I'm still trying to get into, trying to get organizations in, in the North Carolina state system. I'm in North Carolina, but I was going into a prison in South Carolina. I was a part of a program called Academy of Hope by, um, with uh, Mr. Andre uh, Norman. It's his program. I was going down there helping facilitate. I was supposed to have been painting murals in the prison, but I haven't stopped. And I was, I was driving from Greensboro to somewhere like near Greenville, South Carolina. You know, like this was every day I would drive down there. But um, yeah, I, so I've, I've been extremely active. I, I haven't, uh, so I've, I've been focusing on doing better for myself. I feel like if, the better I can do for myself financially, the more I can do for other individuals, which is why I, I went into real estate and became a real estate agent. You can't do that in a lot of, in a lot of states, not with a felony. But North Carolina, I was fortunate you can do that. Uh, I've been active. I, I stay active. I try to get involved with anything that when I see somebody like yourself has something going on is geared towards helping individuals in prison. I'm, I'm a part of it. I, I make myself available. Like I, I'm like you, I'm, I'm all, always offering my services, how I can help, but my opinions are going to be very different than yours. So opinions are like assholes. You know that I deal with facts. So one thing I don't deal with is religion. Why? Because there's so many different religions in this world. Every, every, everybody on here probably has a different religion, a religion. So that can divide us. I don't, I'm not about any type of anything that divides. If we're gonna do something, we have to do it collectively and together. So we can't be using our ideals and our opinions when we're trying to formulate a plan. You know, if, if it's supposed to be all inclusive, it needs to be all inclusive. So me, I'm not religious. So we can't say that for you, how you operate and how you do things is on you, but I'm not religious. So that's not my driving force. It is for a lot of people. I understand we're in the South. When I live in the Bible Belt, I understand, but it's not like that up North. And then you got, you know, I don't want to, I never want to make a, a person feel ostracized or, you know, feel different because they don't share the same beliefs as me. So I like to concentrate on what we do have in common. What we don't have in common, we can leave that in the back. Let me you ask know, you I, this. I, hey, James. I, I apologize. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. Well, I mean, one thing, religion is not the only thing. Financial situation divides us. 
the color of our skin divides us. Being raised in the suburb and being raised in the hood divides us. You got black people who are raised in the suburbs that don't that don't understand what we went through in the ghetto. We got people who were raised in the city that don't understand what we were uh, exposed to in the South. You know what I mean? With the racist thing. So I can't see how, because one thing about religion, religion, regardless of what religion you are, in all religion, people have a moral compass. So my what I believe in is, is how I worship God. So I, me, me as a person and me as an advocate, I don't try to report, force my religion on anybody. I try to find a way that I can help that individually because, because I try to live Christ-like. And the same thing, James can tell you inside, when I conducted programs, I had uh, the Hebrew Israelites, I had the Moors, I had the Nation of Islam, I had, I had all the brothers. I used to create think tanks with all of them because I know that inside, because on, only a narrow-minded individual who doesn't want change can't see past personal religion. You see what I'm saying? Because oh one, one yeah, but I, there I, are quite a few narrow-minded individuals who can't see past. But, past but let me tell you, let me, I can take five different people with five different religions and bring them in the south. I always use this this uh, I always use this 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 scenario for people to really think about how bad it is for us. I can take five different people, African American men, and bring them to the south. All of us riding in a car together. We get stopped on a, on a back row in the gravel while I raised up in the Mississippi Delta. When they pull us out the car, they're not going to ask either one of us what our religion are. You see what I'm saying? When they have, I when agree. They, when they string the rope, they're going to string up all five. But all I five agree. Of us are down there. I the agree, but I'm talking about. Out. But the same that thing divides us. The same that divides thing us. In prison. Okay, hold on, same hold thing on. Race ride in prison. When it's black and when it, when it's when it's Hispanic and black, then that's. They're not coming. They're coming to kill all of us as black men. They're not coming to kill me because I'm a Christian or you because you're uh, in the nation or anybody I else. Agree. I agree. I agree. You know I saying? agree. So we got to get past that and stop using that as an excuse to 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 come together. I just think it's and for its economics. I know a lot of poor people that did a lot better than us when they didn't have anything. Because one thing about it, it's it's, it's too you know, the, one of the biggest quotes is, "A uh, people won't change until the pain." of remaining the same is greater than the pain of change itself. Incarceration, what that means is until incarceration hurts, whether it hurts you, the, the pain from you being away from your family is greater than you being inside, then you'll get up and fight. What drove you to get up and fight for you? What drives you to get up and fight for her? Because it hurts me when I go in and I see people inside who are still incarcerated. It hurts me to see that the, 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 people, the people I walk by every day is 90% African-American. It hurts me. So this was that's what drives me every morning because it, it's painful for me to see. That's what made me fight every day because it was painful for me to be without my family and but you know without the people that love me. But I want to hear from some other people. That just okay. You know let me, I mean? I'm, I'm, Mr. Gotti, give me one second. I want to take this to him, then I'm gonna let you speak. Um, and then we're gonna move on to some more people. Mr. Carlos, Mr. Parks, I want to say this to you. This is just my opinion. Religion within itself don't divide us. What divides us is how we, how people interpret their religion, how their opinion of the religion is. Because the, when you look at religion, I look at the Bible. The Bible is the Bible. The Quran is the Quran. Um, whatever, whatever sacred book there is, that never changes. What changes is the people's opinion of their interpretation of those books. So this is one reason why we were taught while we was in the inside, do not have conversations about religions. And yeah. in, in, in sports, you know, because yeah. it's, it's a matter of opinion. You see what I'm saying? It's not factual. The book, if I could go to the Bible all the time and it's going to say the same thing, you know, um, I can go to the Quran all the time. It's going to say the same thing. One beautiful thing that I encountered was going to that religious program because I had an opportunity to be around every religion and learn every religion's way of living, way of life, you know, and that made me. You know, so I know a little Arabic. I know a little bit about, you know, a little about everything, you know, so that being the case, I can relate to everybody. Does that mean that um, that makes me a bad person? No. So I'm not I'm just going to say that I am understanding your frustration. I understand where you're going. But I think that it's not the religion itself that separates us. I think it's the interpretation of the religion, because that's what people argue about. They're not arguing about, um, you know, the actual factual Bible. They're arguing about how they see what's in the Bible to me. That's what they argue about. 
Go ahead, Mr. Uh, uh, I'll mute yourself, Mr. Gotti. I think he wanted to comment on that. Then we're going to move on. We'll let Miss Sandy Freeze and everybody else get, get off its own knee. Cause, you know, go ahead. Go ahead, sir. All right. Well, I came back to elaborate a little bit. I heard I heard that same frustration, um, Mr. Fox. And brother, but I, I can tell you, I, I feel your frustration. And I'm going I'm to point this at me and not at you because I don't want to step on nobody's toes or offend anybody. Sometimes we have to be mindful of things we say because sometimes some of us don't care who we offend. And I think in, in my growth and in my maturity, because sometimes you can be grown and haven't matured enough. Um, but I, I, I would say this, religion is one of the biggest things in the world. One of the biggest things in the world. And, it has, and, 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 and though it may work for some, it may not work for some others. I have friends, all kind of backgrounds, all kind of nationalities. Now, you know, it kind of what you did brought out some of me. I, I didn't elaborate about my incarceration because I've grown from there and I don't go back to a place where I came through a lot of change. I've been to uh, Jessup FCI, Federal Correction Institution. I've been to Lee Arendelle LACI. Uh, uh, which was uh, called Alto, where the grass stayed more red than green. I've been to Reedsville. I've been to a lot of prisons. But I'm not in prison in here. And a lot of people are. And like I said, it kind of, it kind of, it kind of hurt me to see your pain because I, I, I know a lot of that pain. I know a lot of pointing the finger and, and, and being mad at the world and being mad at others. I got friends now, I, I used to then, and this is no offense to anybody who's on the screen. I got friends now who are white. I, I ain't like white people. I felt like they had been bad to me all my life. Now my best friend is an FBI agent. He's a white guy by the name of Ryan, who I love like a brother. I welcome him in and out of my house. I welcome him to watch my family when I'm gone. And I do the same for him when he gone. I had some big issues, brother. Unlike anything I can explain to you on this TV, on this screen that we're talking on. But I, I, I know you got a lot more soul searching to do. And you don't have to be religious, brother, to get to the root of these problems that we need to solve. You are very, very wise and intelligent, brother. I can see it in you. But, but, but sometimes we have to be careful. And I had to learn that because sometimes, even with family and friends, it was things that I would say sometimes that I go back and think about later. And I, and I say to myself, you know, I, I may have shouldn't have said that. And sometimes, sometimes we say, well, I ain't gonna take back nothing I, I said because I'm a man and I'm big and bad and whatever, you know, I don't care, it's whatever. But I've been there, I've been there, but I'm a whole different person because of religion. I didn't believe in, I, I came from a background with my mom, my auntie, everybody was in religion. And I was like, religion ain't for me. It ain't for me. I don't care nothing about it. I believe in God, I'm gonna have God that sit up, but I'm gonna do what I wanna do. But God showed me something different. I don't have to tell you how. But spiritually, he came into my life and changed my whole life. People are here on this, on, on this Zoom right now meeting, asking about creative ways to make changes. And creative ways, however you see fit in action to bring about that change, whether it's religious or non-religious, brother, we are all here to assist one another and to assist those who are in need of help who can't help themselves, like what you mentioned here earlier. You mentioned here earlier about brothers who can't help themselves and about a system that's failing every day. Every day, I know what you're talking about. I've been in, in the courtroom. I've been on the hot seat. I've been uh, uh, done wrong. I've been where I didn't have the monies to, to pay for an attorney and had to deal with one that was set up to send me down the road. I've been there. But I'm saying to you that, you know, believer or non-believer, brother, let's focus on those creative ways to be a, a, a assistant to uplifting those who have fallen and those who are gonna continue to fall because of our ignorance sometimes. I've been ignorant. I ain't always been wise. I'm still not wise. God is my wise counsel. That's who I go to. I don't go to man. Man has failed me all my life, all my life. But with God, I don't fail. He's been uplifting. He's been uplifting. He's been uplifting. And ain't nobody going to tear down that spirit for me. Nobody. 
because I know where, where I've been and I know where I'm going. I say to you, brother, and I say to everybody in this Zoom meeting that I love you. I love you as Christ loved the church. I love you as Christ loved the Father. And I love all people, all races, all backgrounds, because everybody is not the fault. Because I did that. I pointed that thing. I pointed, 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 pointed. Everybody ain't to blame. It's people, man, you'll be amazed at the nationalities of people who step up that don't look like us. They don't look like us. They always say, hey, man, I don't like the people. Them people all my life, ever since I've known, they have no good. They can now, they just, they, 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 they've been our fall. Can't, I, I, I can't continue to blame people for where I made bad decisions or others are making bad decisions. Because some of those people are looking at us and saying, hey, well, why didn't you do something different with your life? Because there's people who look like us, us who has done great things. You know what I'm saying? And they ain't sitting around saying, hey, you know, these people right here are bad people. You know, so let's 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 kind of take into account, you know, that there are other people present who have, you know, feelings and thoughts that they may not want to say what you're saying on here, because, you know, sometimes when we get a certain emotion going on, we, we just let out what whatever. So I understand you as brother with love. I ain't saying it to you with any kind of hate or any kind of animosity at all, because God is love. I ain't here just on my own, nor are you. Something made you, whether you want to believe that or not. And as I was telling my cousin earlier, Mr. Jones, nothing comes from nothing. Something created us all and put us all here. But what are we here on this Zoom meeting for tonight? We're here to uplift and to support each other and those who need the help and those who need the support of us. We can't do that if we if, if we in battle against one another because we're here to help each other, brother. Man, I want to get to know you on a personal level if, 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 if that's okay with you and have take out some time to get an opportunity to talk to you and hear some of your insights and you know, learn a lot about you. And, I, and I, I commend you on the things that you are doing that I don't know what they are, but I commend you on what they are and uh, and hope that, you know, that that you will be guided in some better light, you know, on, on, on the um, some of the things you said. And I'm not going to take up a lot of time because I was actually trying to just listen to what everybody was saying and build support. So excuse me for coming in, but I just had to elaborate a little bit on what I heard. So with that, um, I'm going to give it back to you, Mr. Jones. And, 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 that, and that is. Okay, I appreciate you. Um, Mr. Park, I want to say this to you. Um, I have followed you. Even though we haven't, we haven't, um, we recently got back in contact, I always follow the individuals that's doing something that, that's constructive. I have followed you. And um, I'm, I would be the first to say that I'm definitely proud of what you have accomplished. Always knew you had it in you from the time that we were in. But um, one thing that I'm going to, challenge you to do is um and and again any walk or anything that you may need assistance with i may need assistance with we're gonna work with each other because you may see things in, in me that i'm i may need help with and i got something that i need you to help me with anyway when we talk about that on on, on a personal level but um i want to say this see i want to challenge you to uh um you and put i understand what you said about religion so i'm not even putting that into the equation but you got to let go of, of uh, you got too much good in you and you got too many good messages to hold what you have in your heart as far as the, the bitterness and the anger toward the system. Am I saying forget that? No, I'm not saying forget that at all. You know, but the bitterness, as you seen when you were speaking, it came out. Your frustration and all that came out. I'm frustrated with the system as well. But there's a lot of people that look up to you. There's a lot of people that come to hear you speak, you know, and that frustration and all that type of stuff may turn them off. You know, I just want you to think about that. Um, and then, um, you know, and, and again, we're, we're, we're going to get back. We're going to uh, I want to reach out to you about my situation and we can build on this because um, like you, I, I'm you know, I'm frustrated. And you know, I'm frustrated for many reasons, including why we're not making the change, why we're not doing what we're doing. And that frustration is what motivated me to do what we're doing now as far as the broadcast, starting the reinvention center, uh, advocating for people and all that stuff. That, that is my motiv my motivation. You know, so um, I ask that, you know, um, you know, we get together, you know, and I'm not, you know, pinpointing you out or none of that type of stuff there, you know, so please don't think that at all. You know, um, there's no question you're an intelligent brother, always have been from day one from when I met you. 
You don't exhibit the um, characteristics of the individual that should have been in prison. You came out and you showed that. Um, however, you know, I understand the prison affected you in the degree where it frustrated you a lot. It did everybody that's in there should have. That's what the purpose of prison is to, to, uh, to shock people. Um, but um, we'll get to get we'll get to that. Is there anything else you want to say before I move on? Because I want you to know your voice is just as important as my voice. Um, anything else you want to say about that? No, um, no, I'm I'm good. I, I, y'all, they definitely uh, misinterpreted my my um. For one, I'm not emotional. I only deal with facts. I only deal with facts. So uh, if 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 my, it's I just had so much to say. I had so much to say, and I was jumping around. But um, you know, I deal with facts, man. Like like historically. Okay. Okay. okay I I get that. I don't I don't deal with emotions. I don't deal with uh, feelings, like how a person proceed. I just deal with facts. So I, I just said anything I say I can support with facts. You know, again, that, we we already said you're intelligent, brother. So we we definitely um, that goes without well, saying. Well, I appreciate it, but that that's that's that, I mean I think I think that was a misinterpretation of what I was saying. And what I was saying is we need we need like uh, when I say accountability. You thought I meant that we need to be uh, accountable for our own actions. True, indeed, we do need to be accountable. I, I sold drugs. I didn't. I never said I was innocent. It's just the sentence. So I, I should get thirty years, and and you ain't got me with nothing. You know, it's just, that's what I'm saying. I'm just saying we need to be accountable. So so like I say, I was in a situation, and somebody else got way less time than me. I man, I was locked up with a Cuban guy who got eight years. He got caught on a yacht with keys, multiple, he was the plug. He got eight years, but they give me 30. So that's all I'm saying is that we need to have accountability in our justice system, not with us. Okay, yeah, I, okay. I, I, I sold drugs, I, I did that. I did, okay. what I, man, I did that. I, I, I completely agree, I did that, punish me. But 30 years? <laughs> like, that, like it's just, it's just the the way they are doing it. Okay, so, listen. Yeah, I, I, let me I, I, let me say this because we're on a time yeah. restraint. I don't. Please forgive me. You know, I don't want you to feel that what you're saying is not important. I wanted to say two things. First thing yeah. is, next week, I want I want to open up the floor for you to conduct or say whatever it is that you want to say on this on this Zoom meeting. So I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I want you to prepare all week to get out whatever you would like to get out if you don't mind. I know you're there. Picking, I know you're capable of doing it because you do it all the time, but I want you yeah. to do that. Um, this, and I want to say this, and then we're going to move on. Um, when I say accountability, I understand that you are saying something different than what I'm saying. But I need you to understand that I say accountability because we vote these people into office. All the people in the courthouse, majority of the people in the courthouse, the judges, the prosecutors and all that, they get voted in. You know, so so that's Who why I said, men, James? okay, the, okay, if we're not voting, <laughs> we're thirteen percent okay, of the population. Okay, but if we're not voting, we still got to do our part. We have to do our part. We're thirteen percent of the population. Okay, let's agree on that. Let our thirteen percent count there. Uh, but listen, we facts like like numbers numerically, it's impossible for if we all vote, it's not going to do anything if we don't get the assistance from other individuals like the ones we have on this live. I mean, like on this feed, like I agree, yeah, but it, we're not the ones just, just getting them in office. Our 13% is not the only votes that's, that's, that's gonna keep them in or out. We need assistance. Okay, and I agree with that, but we gotta, yeah, you know, but, I, okay, we, we're gonna get back to that. Next week, the Zoom is yours. Please, I'll contact you all for the- all I haven't the stopped voting since I came home. I vote okay. every election. I'm not, and, and please know that we're not, cha I'm not challenging. I'm not saying we, I'm not challenging. But I, I'm saying that I'm asking you to host a Zoom next week on whatever topic that you feel is important that people need to to hear. What I'll do is I'll, right. get, I'll get back with you and um, you can tell me that and I'll start pushing the title out and stuff like that there so we can do that. Because, of, you know, you have a lot that you want to say. And it needs to be heard because it is good information. Don't misunderstand me. I'm not disputing that. It is good information. You know, so um, I just want to say that to you. With that, I want to talk to two more people. So then we had to close because we rolled in almost two hours of this. We could talk about this stuff forever and ever and ever, ever. Um, next person I want to speak to is Miss uh, Sandy Freeze. How you doing? Can you unmute yourself, ma'am? How you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you. No problem. Um, um. Can you, whatever you like to share on, can you uh, go ahead and share, please? 
your thoughts, particularly your thoughts of um, the topic yeah. and other things. I, I absolutely, I, you know, I, the thoughts that I wanted to share are gone uh, because uh, they, they will uh, be brought up at, a, at another time. Okay. okay. But, but I do want to say, um, Mr. Parks uh, from North Carolina, reentry advocate, prison speaker, and you're an artist as well, I believe. So kudos to you. Congratulations for your much success. And I also, I, I have to say, uh, on a personal level, I have never been in a physical prison, but I have been, uh, this is tough. Uh, I have been in an emotional prison for years and years. Um, emotional prisons are difficult. Um, I'm not going to get into why. I'm just telling you that uh, this has happened. You know, I've lost most of my family members. Um, I don't feel the way they did. I was raised in a racist community. Does racism exist today? Absolutely, it fucking does. Do you need support? Absolutely, you do need support. But we all need support. I, I'm going to reiterate a quote uh, that I, I believe I may have said during the last podcast I was on. It's by Martin Luther King Jr. People fail to get along because they fear each other. They fear each other because they don't know each other. They don't know each other because they don't communicate with each other. Individuals have got to come together in support of one another. And, and I, almost, I also have to say, uh, you know, uh, that when I was living in a homeless shelter, uh, a shelter for domestic violence under <sighs> protection with my, my two daughters, I thought, how am I ever going to, how am I ever going to manage? How am I ever going to get a home? How am I ever going to get out of this situation? Uh, when I was being sexually and physically physically abused as a child, I thought, how am I ever going to do this? How am I going to get out of this situation? Well, I did, and I did, and I know in my heart, regardless of what anyone else says, I did not do this on my own. There was, there was someone higher above me helping me, or I would not have been able to do this at yeah, that was years ago. Um, but I want to want to just say a couple of things uh, because the the topic this evening is change. Uh, I have three things to say about that. On an individual basis, no one is going to change until they realize what needs to be changed within themselves. No one is going to change without the desire to change. So first, we need to know what we need to change. As an individual, I need to know what I need to change. I also need to know, I, I need to have the desire to change. I need to say, that was the past, this is now. You know, I, I desire, uh, I, I realize I need to change my attitude. I need to realize not everybody in the whole wide world is horrible. There are good people. Then I need to have the desire. And the third, I need the support. Uh, I need the support. You good people, every single one of you that are on this panel, uh, you know, we, we must support one another. We must come together. Uh, we must make change. We must stand together. Uh, and, and I will tell you, you know, we can do this. I see it happening every day. I spoke today to an 85-year-old gentleman that has been out of prison for six months after spending 35 years in prison. And he is speaking in his own little community about change. And he is speaking in his own little community about everyone that will listen to him about what he's been through, <laughs> and how horrible it all was. And, and But look at him now, he's 85 and he's out walking two or three miles a day. So it's possible. Um, I guess that's really all I have to say, but I want to, 
I want to thank everybody because I think you're all uh, very intelligent, uh, caring human beings, and I'm I'm glad to be part of this. Thank you for uh, being a part of. We we are glad that you are a part of it. Um, what state are you in? Indiana. Okay. Indiana, Southern Indiana. I'm about an hour uh, north of Louisville. Um. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm going to move on to Lisa, and then I want to go to Xperia L3. I'm not sure who you are, but I have an idea who you are. Please unmute yourself, Lisa, and then I'm going to you next. Hey, I, you know what? I, I just want to tell everyone thank you also for being on here. Um, I, I'm not going to uh, take a lot of uh, time here, but I, I think change is... is it, it's ongoing, you know, I, I think for, for myself, change is different today than yesterday. You know, I, I think it, it just depends on, on what you uh, need to change. Um, I commend uh, all of you, you know, uh, there, I think the first step is talking about it. And uh, I think we should continue to have this because there's a lot of people out there that uh, they have no clue. You know, um, w when I came out of prison, I was extremely angry because of uh, felonies. And, and how do you start over? I two felonies and I had kids to support. And so, you know, I get it. And, and I, you know, it's hard. It is hard. I think one of the things is uh, you have to, uh, well, for myself, I, I had to figure out how bad did I want it? So, um, but I appreciate everything everyone has said. I, I got a little bit of everything out of all of it. So with that, thank you. And I'll okay, pass it back you. to you. Uh, Lisa, I, I need you to uh, post Connie's contact information on, okay. uh, on the chat um, because um, people are requesting it. Okay. All right. And the next person, I, no problem. Thank you. Um, uh -huh. The next person I want to go to is the young lady. Um, can you Xperia L3? I'm trying to get you to speak. I think this is the, the young lady that was telling me about her husband that's in Florida. Are you that lady from London? I think she's trying to get herself set up. Um, I want to say that... Um, you know, definitely, you know, in my opinion, this, you know, the purpose of this Zoom is actually uh, the, the young lady that was is actually working. I need you to unmute yourself again, please. There you go. How you doing? Working now. Hi, I'm Sandra. Oh, thank you. I've been on once before. Um, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Then, right. um, you know, definitely, you know, in my opinion, this, you know, the purpose of this new one. I think I hear some uh, echo in the background of your, your thing. I just wanted to acknowledge you and let you know that your voice is equally as important to anyone yeah. else. And if you wanted to share anything, you was welcome to do it. Okay. Um. Well, really, I've been fighting. Um, I don't know where to begin. My partner, Trey, is in Kinross. He was convicted of double murder count. That actually never happened. So there was no murder. I have proved that now. The Conviction Integrity Unit is working on his case. But really, we just need media attention to get his case out there. And if you want to share anything. Okay, so are you, correct me, are you the, the, the uh, young lady I spoke to last night about your husband being incarcerated in Florida? Uh, no, no, that must be someone okay. else. Um, okay, so whatever you need, uh, let us know. And uh, we'll do whatever we can to help you get that media attention out of there. Um, um, so yeah, I mean, you know, the conviction integrity unit's got the case. I've been pushing the DA to work faster and get him home. The compassionate release was denied, so it's it's sometimes it feels hopeless, and other times it feels like they're actually doing something, but it shouldn't take this long. There was no crime, it's ridiculous that he's still there. He's losing family members, he lost another one today. His ex, he's lost his daughter last month, you know, his mum's next. We just want to get him home as soon as possible so he can spend time with his mum. And he shouldn't be there. 21 years is ridiculous. From 1999, there was no crime. He stole 
from a couple who were later found dead. About a week later, they were found dead. It was natural causes. The first trial was a hung jury, but then they brought in two snitches for the second trial. So they had two fake snitches brought in for the second trial, which ensured the conviction. One of those snitches has now come forward and admitted he's lied. We've got him on tape saying that he's lied and he's willing to tell the truth now to any lawyer. So we have given all his details to the DA and she's got the whole case. She's got all the proof that he's innocent yet. You know, like I say to her, you've got the proof. You've had the proof for a whole year. I sent you this before I sent it to Wayne County. So why are we still sitting here waiting? Why is the Conviction Integrity Unit not pushing it? Why is he still there? Why is he, you know, being left there to die, basically? He's vulnerable. He's got lung issues. He's been in hospital twice this year with his lungs. Again, recently, you know, they just don't care. You know, he could die of COVID. If he was to catch COVID, he is vulnerable. He's 46, but he's got high blood pressure. He's got um, borderline diabetes. And the nodule on his lung is what worries me. So... Kin Ross is quite quite a good prison compared to the rest, but it's still it's a worry every day. And I keep in contact with his mama, let him know, you know, how she's getting on, how let her know how he's getting on. But it's hard, it's stressful, and his mum shouldn't have to go through this. Twenty one years, it's breaking her heart. She keeps the um, autopsy report, which said it was natural causes and the death. She keeps that in her Bible, saying God will bring him home. God's not working quick enough for me. And I, un I actually, Carlos Parks, I understand what you're saying about religion because I've got a difficult relationship with religion. And for this reason, you know, things that I've seen in life. And then, like, why is Trey in there? Where is God when all these bad things happen to people? You know, you can pray as much as you want. And I don't think God's time is, is quick enough, basically. You know, Trey says, like Morris, oh, you know, all in God's timing. That's not good enough for me. I want him home now. And not for me, not because I'm with him, but because it's wrong. He shouldn't be there. And that's why I got involved four years ago. I came across him by accident. I thought, no way are they giving a man life without parole for a crime that never happened. So I fought his case. I proved it all by myself. Just I'm a dental nurse. I'm not a lawyer. I've had to learn all, like you said, the Latin. That confused me reading those transcripts. I've got all his transcripts here. So I had to basically learn all the, the legal jargon to understand the case, to fight it for him. I've done it all myself with no help from anyone. Morris has actually, when he came out, I, I must have reached out to Morris. So I've got support from him. I've got support from Aaron Salter now as well. So without them, I wouldn't have had any support from anyone. And I fought this case alone all by myself. So yeah, media attention, that's the one thing that we can't get. I can get onto lawyers, I can get onto the DA, but I can't get the media attention because the newspapers are refusing to put the case out there. And it's, you know, they're, they're controlled by the government. They're not gonna let his case get to the media if it's up to them. So I need to, you know, go around them, try and go above their heads somehow and get his case in the media because it's ridiculous. There was no crime. In my eyes, it's a habeas corpus that's held without charge. But then what is holding someone when there was no crime? That's a habeas corpus, you know, it should be a loophole where we can use habeas corpus to get them out. There must be something, you know, I'm, I'm clutching at straws trying every avenue. But to hold someone when there was no crime to me is fucking ridiculous. After 21 years, there was no crime. That's proved now. The DA knows that. I proved that to her a year ago. I've sent her everything, everything in the way of proof. She's got it all, yet he's still sitting there. So for the last year, that was when I sent all the information. I've proved beyond a doubt, 100%, there was no crime. Yes, he stole from the couple when he was in the house a few days before, but they turned up dead, what, eight days later? They couldn't give a time of death. That's another thing they did to him. He couldn't give an alibi because they didn't give a time of death. So how can they not, you know, estimate a time of death so that he can prove that he wasn't around at the, you know, at the time of death, but they wouldn't do that. So they just railroaded him. The officer, the corrupt officer, he was jailed in 2003 for guns, drugs, and gambling. So he's obviously a felon himself. He was jailed. He comes back out. And where is he now? Area five in Oakland, acting captain. So that's, uh, that's what I think. They're protecting the officer. They're not dealing with the case because there's an, a corrupt officer involved who is still on the force as an acting captain. And that's my worry that you know, I said to the DA, it seems to me like you're stalling and stalling, hoping he'll die in there so that you don't have to deal with the case. You don't have to, you know, check that corrupt officer. Why the fuck is he in Area 5? Corrupt officer. He's corrupt as fuck. You know, he's been, it's been proved. He's been jailed himself in 2003. So why is he on the force? Why is this case not being looked at when he was jailed? That's another thing. When an officer has proved corrupt, any case he's worked on, homicide detective too, he had years of experience. It wasn't, it was a choice that he made that day to say it was murder and pin it on Trey. It wasn't, you know, through lack of experience. So he has no excuse. He knew what he was doing railroading this man. And not on my watch, basically, not on my watch. No way. It's been four years I've fought this case. And I've had enough. I want him home now. This year, before Christmas, so he can spend Christmas with his mum. My thing was, 
October, you know, each each kind of month I give myself a new target, right? I'm gonna get them home by this time, I'm gonna get them home by this time. Hasn't happened. And I'm getting frustrated now, getting pissed off. And I've pulled the DA on uh, bullshit twice. The last month I've really, you know, gone hard at the DA and I didn't hold my tongue because I know that, you know, she should care. I said to her, have you not got a heart? I've tried Trump as well, emailed Trump because I know him and Dana are at each other's throats. So I've tried to play them off against each other and say to Trump, you know, I know you're a decent person. She might not be, but you are. And, you know, you've got the power to do something. You know, get this man out of there. Let him home. He's done nothing. Yeah, he stole, but he would have got four years for that. You know, he should be home. He should have been home after four years for the theft. And it was the, the amount of cash and the car he stole would have got him four years maximum. 21 years later, he's still sitting there. So, yeah, media attention is what we need, really. I've proved the case. It's beyond ridiculous that he's still sitting there. And, you know, me from the UK had to learn US law to get this man out of there. It's ridiculous. And Morris has had all this from me. Morris, I'm constantly messaging Morris, like, what about this? What about that? I've asked him for so much advice. Poor Morris, I've hounded him for months. I've nice. As soon as you came out, I was probably on your back, like, oh, Morris is helping people. Okay, let me just approach him and see what he can do and see what advice he can give me. So I've asked him so many questions, and he's he's been a, a godsend, godsend, really. He's amazing. He's the best teacher. I call him the best teacher. You're going to get a best teacher award from me. He taught me about ghost drugs, and I knew about the system from the case and from researching, but 13th documentary and Morris teaching me about ghost drugs and things like that. It's just made me realize even more that we can't give up. We have to come together and do something about this system because it's racist, pure racist. Okay, let me ask you this. Did you uh, take down the contact information for myself and uh, anybody else that's on here? Lisa, I think Lisa has the contact information. Yeah, I'm kind of collecting your information. I, I was gonna, I don't know if I've messaged you already, James Jones, or whether I think you were on Last my... night, that's what I'm asking you, was that you talking to me last night? No, it wasn't me, no, it wasn't me last night. Um, I was in London, but now I've moved to Essex. Okay. So I, I don't know whether that was a bit confusing, but yeah, it's ridiculous that he's still there. Like I said, he's losing family members each month. Okay. Well, we definitely mm -hmm. want. I definitely want to uh, uh, look more into this with you. You know, and yeah, uh, as you as you know, I work. I work with him. But you know, I know you also you've got a lot of people that you're helping. So, no, I don't do that. I don't do that. I don't believe in that. You know, I don't believe in that. Uh, when I'm saying I'm trying to help a lot of people, I'm trying, I want to help everybody, but I got to help them all. That, you know, uh, can't, I can't yeah. take on, I can't you take can't on everybody at one time. Um, but your situation is somewhat different. You know, it doesn't yeah, require well, a lot of work. It's uh, proved, like I said, everything is done. All the groundwork is done. All we and need. And that's is what makes it. Attention. That's what. That's what makes your case unique and and, and more manageable because you exactly. are helping. Your work is done. That's helping. what I said. Hey, what the fuck? That your work is done. Like. I did your work for you and you still can't just sign a piece of paper and get something done. Okay. Well, um, you had the contact information. When are you available uh, 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 to actually speak on this? Um, well, I'm available all the time, really. I'm working from home at the moment. I've got a little business from home. So. Okay. So Maurice has your, uh, your, uh, your contact information, correct? Yeah. Yeah. He's okay. got my details. Okay. But, but before, before Tuesday, um, we're going to reach out to you, Miss Lisa, Myself, Maurice, and Lisa works together. Uh, we're recruiting Carlos and uh, and uh, Mr. Gotti over here. So, um, and anybody else that's willing to help, I'm, you know, you know, seriously, uh, we're recruiting everybody. Um, well, we are willing to help you, you know, um, and we'll uh, put our heads together and come up with a way to get this media attention out. We are already contacting some media sources for a gentleman. We're helping Mr. Uh, Quentin Sanders, so we have, you know. Uh, uh, the, yeah, the, that's no. why I didn't want to approach you too much because you've, you're already working on cases that, you know, need proving, trace cases proved. Okay, so that makes it easier then, would you say? Yeah, no, no, but I don't want to, you know, call on people that are so busy helping so many others unless I really need to. Okay, well, we're not, uh, you know, I don't want to make it feel like I'm pushing myself on you. But I'm, oh, no, 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 but I'm extending, but I'm, extending, okay, but I'm extending the help to you, you know. So if you want the help, then we're helping you. Know, Maurice, Maurice are already helping you. We're helping you. So yeah, uh, we, 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 we need to get 100 percent in there. Then. You know, we need to get 100 percent, 100 percent in there. So uh, uh, sometime before Tuesday, I'll reach out to you, myself, yeah, Lisa, yeah. and uh, Maurice. You know, uh, we'll reach out because he's already. We'll get with him. He'll fill us in, and then we'll reach yeah, out to you. Humanity for prisoners, which are helping. They're getting police reports so low. They've been amazing as well, but they can only do so much. They're non-profit. Okay. Um, definitely, we will be in contact because we definitely want to help you. I want to tell you that. Take down this information. So that means the world. <laughs> it's on the chat. Someone helped us. 
you know, someone helped us, you know, so that's what this yeah, is about. Yeah, and then we'll all pay it forward. Like, that's play, Trey's plan as well. Once he's out, he's going to be on here doing what you do, helping others and changing the system. So at the moment, I'm doing it all. But once he comes out, he can take over and I can get back to my resin and get back to my own kind of stuff that I do. Okay. Well, you have our contact information. You have my Lisa Riley information on it. I don't know if you see it with Breaking Silence with Prison Reform. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Lisa's always on, isn't she? Yeah. Okay. Um, take hers down and then we'll, we'll, we'll get your information, contact information from Maurice. And you can expect the, uh, a call from us by Tuesday. What time zone are you in so we know what's a good time for you? Um, well, I'm six hours ahead. Okay. Okay. So, Six hours um, ahead. Yeah. Okay. So um, we we are uh, we're definitely getting in contact with you. We we'll, we'll text you. We'll either text you or message you first. Um, and make sure to confirm a good time for you. They do that. Yeah. You say that you have reached out to me on. I don't know whether I did or I was going to. I might not have actually done it yet. Okay. Well, because I thought it. you know please all we it. really need is media attention and yeah, please just had a lot going on. Please do it. I think there's enough people on this platform to where we can actually get get the story out to to some degree. Um, yeah. You know, so please. Do I have reach a, out. I have a painting about the system that might help kind of get it get him out there. He's an artist, so he did paint uh, his interpretation of the system, and it's actually quite good. Okay, can you take a picture of that? Well, you yeah. you, you here, here, yeah, I'll take a picture and send it to your page. Okay. Do, do, yes, definitely do that. Definitely. Do it's that. called Who's Justice, My Rage and My Strength. Okay, definitely do that. So I think that piece is a good one to get him out there, his case. Okay. All right. Uh, we definitely will be in contact with you and we'll go from there. Do any, you know, we're getting kind of late. We've been on here, I think, two hours, over two hours. Uh, yeah. Not that I'm not enjoying it, but uh, we definitely got to get off of this. Yeah, I'm at um, 3 a.m. and I've got to be up at 6. Okay, so please contact us. You know, uh, okay. you know, we will be in definitely. contact with you, and we'll go from there. Um, I definitely appreciate everybody that came on and that was that participated in it. You know, um, actually, I got to go to work in two hours. You know, hmm. but um, not going to sleep is it? <laughs> no sleep. Um, but, but you know, God, you know, I, hey, you know, I, I'll be all right. I'll be all right. Um, but mm -hmm. you know, I definitely appreciate everybody. We're gonna wrap this up so we can get out of here. Galaxy C nine. Um, I haven't heard anything from you. I'm not sure who you are. If you would like to speak, please let me know. Unmute yourself and let me know. If not, just, you know, uh, um, thanks again for coming. Um, um, I want to say uh, we'll do something next week. Mr. Parks, please get with me. You know, um, I'm definitely looking forward to working with you, you know, on any platform. You know, we definitely want you to come to. We're having a rally for Mr. Sanders. We definitely would like for you to come and speak and uh, participate in. Where the, is that? It's going to be. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Clifton. I see you've prepped it up. You finished eating and all that there. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I, I, I better have some fried rice that you to fry that microwave too. You better have my bowl. South Haven. <laughs> South Haven, Mississippi. Where, oh, I ain't going there. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm not going. There's two states I don't go to, and that's Mississippi and Alabama. I'm sorry. I'm not going. <laughs> I'm not going there. Uh, no. Mississippi is kind of dangerous. Yeah, I'm not going there. <laughs> uh, Morris grew up there, so he feels comfortable. It's home to him. Whereas I got a partner else, in Mississippi, and he want me to come. I'm not going. I can't do it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, well, we you know, we know in the future when we have rallies outside of those two states, outside of two <laughs> states that we uh would uh we 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 check back with you, brother. All right. um, you know, um, we definitely appreciate it. How you doing? Uh, uh, I see you got your phone unmuted. Uh, Galaxy Nine S Nine. Yes. How you doing? I really don't have anything to say. I just want to say thank you guys for this platform. I I thoroughly enjoyed it, and I was invited in. Uh from off of a Facebook Live with Mr. Maurice Clifton. So shout out to you, my brother. Thank you. Thank you. We we just we just love Mr. Maurice Clifton. He has a lot of friends, man. He bring this bring a lot of people with him. He don't share his food, so I'm not really understanding why people follow him like that there. Cause yeah, he eat rice. <laughs> you know, but uh he's That's a great guy. I know he's a great guy. But thanks everybody. What we're gonna do, we're gonna wrap this up. Um I, I again it was a pleasure. Uh, Mr. Parks, I'll be in contact with you soon. Please reach out to me. 
Um, I want to cooperate with you on doing some uh some speaking and stuff like that as well because I'm about to start a mentoring program up in this area here, um, and a motivational speaking program. And I definitely need to get with you about us going back into Petersburg. Um, we okay. need to cooperate. Yeah. Definitely, I definitely yeah. want to do that there. Right. Um, so um, everybody, with that being said, I say good night to everybody, and um, I'll see y'all next uh, next Sunday at eight o'clock. All right. All right. Peace. Thank you. Peace. Peace.